What's going on YouTube? It is Luke Waters back into the YouTube video and today working in the garage today Just got done tearing the uh, valve covers off and getting this thing ready for the uh, winter build Which is what I'm going to talk about today now when I got the LSA running I decided to get a very cheap uh, belt kit setup. I'll show it to you guys right here. It's LSX Innovations uh, six rib belt drive kit now It did work good, but I can only run a six rib belt and I had to modify this bracket to get it to work. And as you can see, my belt was hitting quite a bit. So I want to—I don't want to use this because I think it's be more efficient getting the eight rib setup. And I'm going to be getting rid of my stock valve covers. Uh, I got to be swapping those out for some LSA style valve covers to clear the coils. Because the coil brackets right here, these actually do not clear the injectors when you put them on, so I need to get new valve covers for that reason. Basically, my goal is to clean up the setup underneath the hood. And I got everything tore apart that needed to be tore apart. As you can see, the accessory drive is gone. And the valve covers, those are the two big ones. I've been doing some research on uh, belt drive kits and which one would be good to use. Obviously, OEM GM is probably gonna be the best one I can get, but there's still a nationwide back order on LSA parts, so I'm not gonna do that. And I thought about something. I don't think I wanna run a smaller pulley on the supercharger. Obviously, I can't do that right now because my injectors are maxed out, but I think I would rather do max timing over max boost. I feel like you can make more power and be more reliable on timing versus just cranking the boost up. Obviously, cranking the boost up is gonna be much easier to do, and probably a lot easier to tune, but it generates more heat, which doesn't make it as reliable, it doesn't make it as consistent. So I think the best way of going about this is to crank up the timing instead. And I don't have to do as much to my fuel system. I can keep my stock ZL1 fuel pump. I do have to do injectors no matter what, because these are just stock LSA injectors, and they are maxed out, and they are screaming for mercy. So I'm gonna pull these off here soon as well, get the fuel rail off and get those injectors listed on Marketplace for sale. Now injector size, I think I'm gonna go with the uh, the 1000 cc injectors. That way in the future, I wanna run E85. I have the injectors to do it, um, which E85 might be a thing. I don't know if I'll be able to do it on the stock fuel pump, but if I can get this car to push about 625 on stock boost, I'd be happy with that. Obviously it's got a cam and everything else. So if I can push about 625 stock boost, I think we're gonna do something really good with this car. Another thing I need to do is get rid of this horrendous intake. If anybody out there wants a Rotofab, I have one for sale. I got the other Rotofab parts somewhere in the garage, 150 bucks, shoot me an offer. But I wanna get a five inch intake that goes from here down to there. They say the five inch intake alone, no matter what boost you're on, what timing you're on, whatever, it's good for about 20 wheel horsepower. So that'll definitely help my numbers go up a bunch. I think probably right now, if I had to dyno this car today, I'd probably say I'm around 560. So I'm not too far off from my goal on where I wanna be. And this thing has like hardly any timing onto it. So doing more fuel mods, more flow mods, I'm hoping I can crank the timing up just a little bit more. The reason, I don't know if it was knocking and that's why we stopped increasing the timing, but I think if we can somehow get rid of some more heat and get this thing to flow a little bit better, maybe do some better headers, get rid of these piece of crap Manzos. I hate Manzo headers. Please, if you have a G8 or Caprice or even an SS, do not buy Manzo headers. At least get JBAs. That's what I might switch to. They have the V-band style and they're an inch and seven eighths versus the uh, inch and three quarter, I think, which is what these are. And Manzos are just cheap. They don't bolt up right. They leak. They, they just sound like crap. Don't get Manzos, please. Other than that, the car is going to stay relatively the same. I might mess with the uh, front mount. Um, I don't know if you guys showed you guys, but it's kind of sitting a little funny. I might tuck it back in a little bit more and run my coolant lines. So these are my blower coolant lines for the brick. I might flip those around and run them this way to open up a lot more space over here. Because as you can see, it's a... Uh, it's a tight fit working on this thing. It's not impossible to work on, but it's kind of a pain in the butt to do. Uh, it's just not very much space. So the winter build isn't gonna be like super extreme. I'm kind of budgeting everything out. So I already got the valve covers. Those are coming. Those are about $200. Injectors, I want to get some used ones. So I'm going to take my time looking for some injectors. I don't really want to spend 1200 bucks on brand new ones. I'd rather buy used ones at half off. 
and they're always for sale, so why not? I'm gonna have my friend make a custom five inch intake. That's gonna be a really interesting video. I wanna have him kind of record some of the process of him making it because I think that's gonna be really cool. It's gonna be made out of like a, I don't know if we're gonna use aluminum or what he's gonna use, but some kind of lightweight metal intake that goes down to the fender. That's gonna be an exciting little add on here because I'm curious to see what the power difference from that versus a real five inch is gonna be. Tuning wise, I think we're gonna try and go mathless. Uh, we tried it before, but the, for some reason the car won't run without a math. Um, like we're trying to do like a speed density tune, couldn't get it figured out. The car did go with a math regardless, it still ran fine, but maybe we'll figure something out into the future. Now I know I made that video on the wiring with the uh, intake temperature sensors and stuff, and I also did the map sensor. I'm gonna redo all the wiring and I'm going to record all that and show you guys how to make it look a lot nicer because I just kind of threw it together and wanted it to run before the end of the year. And a little side note here, I don't know if it's in the garage or not, but I broke my stock diff. I grenaded that poor guy. It's outside in the rain where it belongs. But I was doing a pull versus a Camaro and... Yeah, it, uh, it it ended its life. It was on its way out. It was clunking really bad when you turn. Uh, it was sick, but I replaced it with a stock G8 differential, and I went ahead and uh, did the polyurethane bushing mod. I just used some RTV silicone, and it worked really, really well. Like These tires light up now like before. It felt like the rear end kind of rocked, but now it feels a lot more solid, so I'd highly recommend doing that if you're gonna do a diff swap. I just did the stock gears. Uh, the stock rear ends are pretty good on this thing. So I don't know what happened to my old one. Maybe lack of maintenance because the fluid was pretty dark and obviously metallic -y from whatever broke my diff. So stay tuned, we're gonna tear that diff apart and see exactly what went wrong with it. But other than that guys, yeah, this car did, I mean, fantastic. For a BTR stage four, all motor cam with uh, stock boost, this thing hauled, man. I mean, it, this thing was a killer, like it, it was pretty fast. So now I wanna perfect the setup, clean it up, get the right injectors, maybe try to throw some more timing at it, and hopefully we can make some more power. Like I said, 620 is like a, I'm really 600 is where I wanna be, but I wanna shoot a little higher, so that way I'm kinda doing a little extra stuff to make sure I hit my goal. A lot of guys seem to hit uh, 660 something with E85, which I think is kinda low, but we'll see what happens. I wanna keep it on 93, I wanna keep it reliable, I don't, like I said, I'm not trying to like gap the world or anything. I want this car to be reliable. I want to be able to take it to the track, race it and drive it home without worrying about breaking anything or like melting anything or obviously cracking a brick, which as you guys know, my brick cracked and I had to get it reinforced already on it just starting. So I don't want to run into any problems with the LSA in the future. They say heat kills these blowers and I'm not trying to break the blower or trying to, like I said, set world records or anything. I uh, just want a good, reliable street car that's fun to drive around. And I wish it had a little more torque and it's funny to say that because obviously blowers have a lot of torque, but like driving around town, like from stoplight to stoplight, I have to kind of really get into boost for it to move. And I think it has a lot to do with the lack of timing. So we're going to try and get some more timing on this thing and just make it more streetable. I thought about swapping cams, but we'll stay with the BTR Stage 4 for now. Uh, it's a good cam. I would like to go to maybe like a Stage 2 uh, supercharger cam, but like I said, we'll see. I mean, I'm not far from it. All I gotta do is pull my water pump off, timing cover off, pull, put some dowels for the lifters, pull the cam out, throw a new cam in, I could be done. Uh, that might be a thing, just depending on, obviously, money. I'm not made of money, I'm not rich. You know, I don't get paid off making YouTube videos. So I'm just some broke dude building a car. I mean, I only got one windshield wiper for Christ's sake. Get less ghetto this winter. Stay tuned, a lot of fun things are gonna be happening. Uh, it's gonna be a busy winter working on this thing and getting it ready to go. Thought about powder coating that and the new valve covers I'm getting because the valve covers I'm getting, I believe are orange or red. So I could do the uh, red lid with the red wires. It might look pretty nice. Um, I don't know yet, but it's getting there, guys. And like I said, stay tuned. We're gonna tear that diff apart probably sometime next week and see what's going on with it. But if you enjoyed today's video and you want to see more of this car through the winter, please hit that subscribe button. As always, it's been the Waters, and I'll see you guys in the next video.